Hi wild children, my name is Hannah and I work for Sierra Club running the Wild Child Program and it's week three of Foraging Fridays and this week we're going to do something really different. We're going to harvest some lichens, you can see them behind me, and we're going to use them to dye some fabric. I love lichens so much. You might think that they look kind of like a moss but they're not. They're actually not even a plant. Lichens are made out of a fungus and an algae. So they're actually something, the two different organisms working together. It's called a symbiotic relationship um, in order to form lichens. So it's really cool because a lot of lichens can grow in really harsh environments like the freezing Arctic or the tops of mountains or in deserts, places where fungi wouldn't be able to live on their own and algae wouldn't be able to live on their own. But together, when they form lichens, they can survive in those really harsh climates. And it's because the fungus provides the structure of the lichen and is able to capture and retain water whereas the cyanobacteria or the algae is able to photosynthesize or use the energy from the sun to create food. So with the water and the food and the structure, they're able to survive really harsh climates. And what's really cool is that there's like 3,600 different species of lichens in North America and new species keep getting discovered all of the time. In fact, there were some rare lichen species that were discovered in PEI recently too. Lichens are really amazing because they absorb pollutants and are really sensitive to any uh, pollutants in the air. So if you ever go walking in a forest that's near a city, you might not see as many lichens as if you go walking in a forest that's more in the wilderness, far away from any cities, because the lichens are able to grow better where the air is cleaner. And that way they're kind of something called a bioindicator, meaning that they tell us a lot about an environment just by where they're able to grow or not grow. So today we're going to be harvesting usnea, or old man's beard, it's, you might know it as, which is this beautiful lichen behind me. And usnea grows on sick or dying trees, and that's why a lot of people might think that it's actually causing the tree to die, but it actually only grows on trees that are already dying. And that's because the uh, trees that are sick or dying, the leaves might start dying off, and that opens up space in the canopy, or the top layer of the tree, so that sunlight can come through. And that allows the algae part of the lichen to photosynthesize, photosynthesize more, so that's why more of it can grow on sick or dying trees. But lichens grow really, really, really slowly, Com especially compared to plants. Lichens grow really slowly, and so if you are ever harvesting lichen, you should never harvest it off of a tree that's still standing. There's plenty of lichen, if you go to a good forest, there's plenty of lichen that's already on the ground or on sticks or branches that have fallen to the ground. Here I'm at a really big tree that fell down during the Dorian hurricane. And so you wanna make sure that you never harvest off of a tree that's still standing. Um, only harvest off of stuff that's on the ground or a tree that's on the ground. You can see in this forest, for example, just how much usnea is on the ground. It's all that, those green blotches or patches. And that's the usnea that you can safely harvest without hurting the ecosystem. So Old Man's Beard, or usnea, is this light pale green color um, and hangs on trees kind of like a clump of hair. And I like to identify it because it is stretchy and has an inner white layer. So see when I pull it, it stretches a little bit and has the inner white layer. So here's another light green uh, lichen, but can you see the difference? Usnea is here on the left, and it's more stringy and hair-like, and this lichen's a bit thicker, and when you try pulling it apart, uh, it's not elasticy at all, it just breaks right apart. So that's one of the ways I tell the difference. And one of my favorite parts of finding a big patch of old man's beard is to play dress up. And once you have a good batch of the usnea, we'll bring it home and then make our dye. So we're back inside um, and it's quite easy. Um, I'm just doing the water boil method for this lichen dye. So I just put the lichen in a pot, covered it with water, and I'm going to bring it to a boil before adding in our cloth. And once, you, once it's at a boil, you just let it simmer for three to four hours with the cloth inside um, to get your color. And I just want to re reiterate again that if you're going to try this at home, um, make sure that you're only collecting the lichen that you find on the forest floor that's already unattached to the tree. 
Um, and even if you only need a few handfuls to do the dye. So even if you only grab a, a little bit each time and bring it home, eventually you'll, you'll have enough to do, to do the dye. So usually when you're dyeing fabric, you have to add some kind of fixant or mordant. But luckily, lichens like Usnia have enough tannins in them that there's enough mordant just in the lichens themselves. But I did add another half cup of salt just to make sure. So here's what my cloth looked like before, and here's what it looked like after. So sort of a muted peachy color. Maybe not quite as brilliant as I was hoping for. But, you know, I'm still learning how to dye, and so it's okay to not be perfect at something the first time you try it. And I would like to try it again using wool, because wool and cotton can dye really differently. So thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you soon! Thank you.